Hey, this is Ben from the Be A Photographer channel, and in this video we're gonna be talking about the color editor, which is basically known as HSL, in Capture One Pro 20. If you don't know what HSL stands for, that is hue, saturation, and luminance. So what tone is the blue, how bright is it, and how saturated is it? I mean, is the blue super blue, or is that part just black and white? There's a ton we can do with the color editor in Capture One Pro 20, so let's set up a quick shot here in the living room studio. Just to show you that you don't need an expensive softbox, I'm just gonna use the included reflector that came with the Explore 600. We'll take that, bring it into Capture 120, and I'll show you a bunch of options of what you can do when mixing the color editor with layer masks. To get a healthy feel and understanding of the color editor, we're gonna start with this iPhone snapshot I took of some bell peppers freshly chopped. To get to the color editor, what you wanna do is hit the color tab, which is gonna be these three circles next to the histogram icon up top, and then scroll down to the color editor. If for whatever reason you don't see this, right click, hit add tool, and go to color editor, you'll see it show up. It's really simple to use on the basic tab. You select the color and then you can change the hue, saturation, and lightness. For instance, let's say we wanted to adjust how bright the green peppers are. All we have to do is select green here, and you'll see if we slide to the left, they'll become more yellow in hue. If we slide to the right, they become more green. And you can see just like that, we've already made a big difference in this image and made them a lot more vibrant. If we wanted to make them more saturated, of course, slide to the right to make them more saturated, slide to the left to reduce saturation. You can see here they're black and white. And what's cool is these sliders are responsive. So you can see exactly the level of saturation here. And just like any other sliders, if we double tap, it resets to zero. And if you wanna change the brightness, AKA the lightness or Luma, again, slide to the left to make them darker, slide to the right to make them brighter. What's nice is you can adjust multiple colors on the same image using the color editor tool. And so if we wanted to then change the yellow bell peppers, we just have to tap on the yellow tab and we can make these same adjustments here. That already looks so much better, literally. There's the before, there's the after, and they look so much fresher, kind of a lie. If we wanted to make it really easy, all we have to do is hit the color picker tool in the bottom of the color editor, and we can click anywhere in the image to have it auto select the color. So if I click here, it'll select the green for me. If I click here, the yellows, and here, the orange. Let's say I want to make it look like we just had yellow bell peppers and green peppers. All I'd have to do is change the hue of the orange a little bit more on the yellow side, bring the luminance up, and look at that, it's a complete lie. Now it looks like we just had yellow bell peppers, but that's not true, that's not the case at all. And of course, I can change the luminance, so if I want them to look more red, I can bring the luminance down, saturation up, and now our original image and our edit using just the color adjustments. And of course, we could go back, add contrast to our white balance, all that, and that's a quick edit. So let's hop into the file I took of myself. It took quite a few tries to get the focus right and get the shadow out of the background. And as you can see, that shadow disappeared pretty well, all in camera. I know what you might be thinking. How did I get rid of that shadow? Was it a V-flat, a reflector, a second light, some trickery? No, all I did was slow down the shutter speed so that the shadow that gets cast by the strobe being right there gets filled in with the natural light coming in from the window. So when I shot with a faster shutter speed, you could see a hard shadow behind me. And when I slowed it down to about 1 13th or 1 10th of a second, the natural light filled in the rest of the shadow here. We got a pretty clean looking shot without a softbox. So now let's edit the colors. If you wanna follow along with this exact image, the raw file is available as a free download. The link is in the description below. And what we're gonna do is adjust the jacket, the pink backdrop, and the blue mug all independently without messing up my skin. You can see if we use the basic controls and selected the background then made it more saturated, it also made my ears more saturated, my skin on my forehead, and my lips. So you can see if we desaturated it, now my lips lost all their color and we wanna avoid that. So we're gonna move into the advanced color editor and again, use the color picker tool here. Let's start with the mug so I can give you a brief walkthrough. As you can see, it selected the blue color and some blue range on the color wheel. If we go down, you'll see this option for view selected color range. This is a super helpful tool. So by doing view selected color range, it'll make everything else black and white and just show our selection and color. From here, we can adjust the saturation of the blue. We can of course change the lightness, basically the HSL. And then we also have an option for smoothness. 
As you can see, when I go to the left, this white line stays pretty harsh. And if I go to the right and make it smoother, it blends anything that kind of has the blue tones in it and gives you superior control. So if we uncheck it, now you can see before there was our blue mug and now we have softened it and saturated it just a little bit. If we want to go further and create a layer mask just from that, all we have to do is click the three dots here, select create mask layer from selection. It'll take just a few seconds. And now we have a new layer mask. If I click M, you can see it perfectly selected the mug. And then we can do anything that we did in previous episodes, like change the exposure, even make an S curve with our RGB, do whatever we want and change the opacity of that, like a regular layer mask. And we made a layer mask perfectly around the mug in just about 10 seconds. Super handy trick. So again, with our color editor on the background layer, this was before, this is what we have now. Understanding the color wheel in the advanced section of the color editor is going to step your game up entirely and allow you to differentiate your selections from similar tones like we have here in this background and on the jacket. To understand that, I'm going to select a new point here on my jacket and do view selected color range. My lips are selected, the background is still pink, which means it's also selected, and the jacket, but I want it to be purely the jacket. How do we do that? Take a look at the color wheel here. On the outside, you have the colors in your selection, and you can adjust those by moving the whole grouping like so. So as you can see, when we move into the blues, it just has the blue selected like we did the mug earlier. And if we stretched it out to also include the reds, it includes my lips, the jacket, and the background. So we wanna select just the red area that's here, but not the pink. So we're going to move our anchor point, which is this dot on the inside, to a similar muted red. You can see here's this muted red, less saturation in the middle, more saturation on the outside. So I'm gonna move my anchor point right around here. I would say that's close to the same muddy burgundy of the hoodie. And then I'm going to make my color selection pretty small. So it's not gonna include pinks really. We're just gonna to tone it down. And now you can see it's mostly the jacket. If we wanna get even narrower, we can pull from the outside towards the inside, and you can see now our range is getting even smaller, and we can pull from the inside to the outside, and now you can see only the jacket is selected. So right now, the right side is pink, that means it's also in the selection, and as we make that selection even smaller, by pulling the saturation range to be narrower, you can see we only have the jacket selected. Looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to click the three dots and create a new mask. Once I have that mask selected, I'm going to remove the view selected color range option, rename this to jacket and press M to see the mask. You can see it selected the jacket pretty well here. If we click on the menu here and show display grayscale mask, you can see it did a pretty good job. It missed some of it, so I'm just gonna grab my brush, make it bigger with the bracket key and brush extra on the jacket. And I'm using the auto mask feature here, so it selects the edges perfectly. As you can see, when I let go, it refines them right there. And to select auto mask, all you have to do is right click on your brush settings and do auto mask. You can see it selected a little bit of my hair, so I'm gonna press E for the eraser tool. I'm gonna make it smaller than that. And now we have a pretty solid mask just of the jacket done fairly quickly. Now we can go on to our curves, and if I turn off the mask by pressing M, I can change it, and look at that. We have a blue hoodie now instead of a red hoodie. Notice that though? That is my neck, and we need to remove that from the mask. So again, we're gonna press E for eraser, make it a smaller size, and simply erase by clicking with our trackpad or mouse. And there we have it. We have now edited the jacket to be whatever color we want, using the curves tool. Pretty quick and easy. So how do we now adjust the background? Well, we could use the color tool again, or I'm going to just create a new empty layer, call this one background paper, and right click to copy the mask from jacket. Now if I press M, you'll see it's the same mask, and I'm gonna right click to then invert the mask, and you'll see it now selects everything except for the jacket. So I'm going to quickly erase the mug and my face. In 
if you erase a little bit too much like I did, you can grab a smaller brush and go over the edges again. And now we have a masked background. So if we wanted to increase the saturation of the pink, we can slide saturation to the right. If we wanted to add a little bit more red in the midtones, we can do that as you can see. Or if we want to make the backdrop just purely black and white, we can do that, reset our curves, and there we are. So that is how you use the advanced color editor to select various portions of your image and change the colors. If we take a look, we had a blue mug, a burgundy jacket, and a pink backdrop, and we ended up with a blue jacket, a more saturated mug, and no color at all in our backdrop. And there we have it. So there is a lot you can do using the color editor in Capture One Pro 20. This was just one example. There are so many more to show you. And in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through how to do teal and orange in Capture One Pro 20 with just two layer masks using similar color editor techniques. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.